In today's deck, we're gonna be talking about Emergent Ultimatum. Now this card, if I could put it into a metaphor, is kind of like asking your opponent, would you rather I hit you in the head with a bat, a brick, or a heavy rock? Don't worry though, it's your choice. And that is exactly why I think this card is fantastic. Cue the intro, let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel today, guys. Thank you so much for clicking out my video as always. Today we're talking about Emergent Ultimatum. The Soul Tie Ultimatum is so, so powerful. It basically allows you to take three of your most god tier cards out of your deck, laying them on the table in front of your opponent and saying, pick how I kill you. <laughs> and that's why I chose the metaphor I chose at the beginning of the intro. But before we talk about this card and all the cards we chose to go along with it, um, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, be sure to do so. It is a free way to help support the channel and it helps the channel grow and get out to more people. So I'd really appreciate it if you could just take a quick moment to do that. And don't forget to ring the bell on the way out too, because that'll notify you anytime we post a video, which is two to three times a week. And now with Cal time coming up uh, shortly on the following week here, um, Actually, it'll be coming out Wednesday, the time I'm speaking to you now. Uh, we will have a video coming out as soon as possible. As soon as I get access to those cards, I'm going to be building decks right away. And we should have a video out to you by Friday. So be sure to hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Let's jump into it, guys. Like I said, this one is a fun one. Uh, the Emergent Ultimatum is a card I've been wanting to play for a long time. And I'm glad we're getting it in right before Cal Time hit uh, so we can get this done and over with because I really, really enjoy this. So if you're not familiar with this card already, so basically... This ultimatum allows us to search up our deck for three mono colored cards and then our opponent gets to choose which two we get to cast against them and one goes back into the deck and so obviously you're going to want to try to go really heavy on the top end with that so here's the cards i chose we went ahead and chose two shark typhoons two massacre worms two koglas and two kiora best to see gods all these cards are absolutely busted in their own way. They serve obviously different sort of um, answers to certain different situations. So we get to choose up to three of them. So it's gonna change dependent on the matchup we're up against. And so Shark Typhoon is obviously gonna be one of the best here in this situation because it hard casts. When you choose this card, it's coming out as a hard cast and you're gonna start generating sharks right away. Um, if we could stack this, it's obviously overpowered. It's really good, it just swarms the board. It's a really good end game. Um, if we're up against, let's say, mono white, mono red aggro decks, and it's a lot of small little creatures that are hard to deal with but are getting wide and just you're destroying your life total, Massacre Worm is a great card because it, you know, it sweeps the board essentially. It minuses 2-2 on all creatures, and when they die, we're dealing damage to them. So that's a really good choice. And then Koglas uh, here for those hard to, you know, those hard to hit big, you know, green stompy decks, those things where we want to get rid of a really big creature off the battlefield. Kogla comes in, it fights another creature, and we're good to go. Also. Whenever uh, Kogla attacks, it gets to destroy target artifact or enchantment, so that could be useful down the road as well. And then, of course, we have the Kraken Cure, Best to See Gods. I've been playing this card a lot lately. I feel like it's a really fun saga. It does some really cool things, and uh, we get to steal our opponent's stuff, which is really fun. So those are going to be our main cards that we're going to be looking for with Emergent Ultimatum. It doesn't mean we can't take other cards it just means that uh if we're gonna do that we're gonna want to take you know probably some big cards here to try to win the game with it so that's why we, we've got those cards chosen also to help us get there we've got a lot of ramp we have four cultivates four lanawar visionaries some people might not expect this card but what's great about this card is it not only acts as mana you can tap it for green which green is the most you know the most uh loyalty to this uh emergent ultimatum green costs the most here it's three green so you want more green so lanawar visionary is an option to give you some green but it also helps you draw a card which is great uh card advantage is something that we lack here so lanawar visionary gets the job done and then we have a bunch of board sweepers here with four extinction events and two shadows verdict because we want to make sure that if we go up against an aggressive deck we have time because time is everything for us we need time to build our board build the mana in order to make our big plays and so we need time and the way to do that is to sweep the board consistently of creatures trying to uh, threaten our life total and then we have another ramp card uh in solemn we have four of it's going to help us ramp and choose our mana particularly to try to help us get to our ultimatum cleanly and it also helps us draw a card as well and then uh to finish it off we have three negates 
This card right here is essentially in the deck specifically for Ugin. I cannot have an Ugin resolve on the battlefield because if it does, everything we built up up to the ultimatum and played onto the battlefield will be ruined with just one Ugin. So the negate helps us protect ourselves the following turn from that Ugin. If we are ramping into our ultimatum, which is a turn seven play, we should essentially be uh, doing that before they can resolve an Ugin by two turns. If we ramped into it properly and if we're going first upwards to three turns ahead of them and then we hold the negate open for the following turn to stop that ugin from resolving and we should be able to win the game always but we do run into a matchup here you're going to see late into the the video where we struggled because our opponent actually had just crazy amount of board control as far as eliminating creatures sweeping the board over and over again it was hard for us to get anything going because we do have a lot of creature generation tools and a lot of our finishers are big creatures um but shark typhoon is the answer for that we're going to get a little bit more into detail about that um, there's some things that i definitely want to change about this deck so be sure to stick around to the very end because we're going to talk about it um, as far as things we would like to change and see better the deck uh, going forward so stick around for that we'll talk about that i'd really appreciate that and then uh let's go right into the gameplay footage i think that's going to wrap it up here um, we could talk about the land a little bit here we've got a lot of basics because we do want to be able to cultivate um, we do have the, uh, the pathways that we are given at least and then obviously it comes with a triumph which is great and then we threw in three fabled passages so if you want the full deck though just go ahead and copy paste in the description below um, into the magic arena and you'll be able to get the full deck list there i do appreciate you guys time let's jump into the gameplay footage i hope you enjoy this and uh, we'll see you at the end peace all right here we go we're gonna be playing some soul tie today some soul tie we're gonna be doing the ultimatum which is nice um it's a it's a pretty sweet card that i've been wanting to play for a while now uh it's got a lot of cool combos you can do with it but um the problem is right now our rankings all the way down to 90 percentile because we've been trying to make this naya deck work for so long that i've been wanting to show you guys and i've just been eating my own eating my own um ranking and mythic so that kind of bums me out but Oh, we're up against somebody with a number too. That's a first. This isn't good. Hopefully we can get there pretty quick with the cultivate. Oh boy, is this rogues? Are we already up against some rogues? I hope not. Okay, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not rogues. Mono black, interesting. Definitely going to cultivate here. Some green mana. Getting closer to that ultimatum. Timurit calls dead. That's fine because we have Shadow's Verdict, which eats up graveyards as well. Ooh, another cultivate. Kind of don't mind if I do, but I actually think I'm just going to go with the Solemn here. That way we have a body to block with. And it threatens the fact that we can draw a card. Let's go with black just because we have so much devotion to black uh, with like Massacre Worm in case we draw it or something. So if I drop this, I think we're there already. We got two, four, six, seven. Yeah, we're already there for an ultimatum, which is nice. All right, we do get to draw a card. And it's an ultimatum. Would you look at that? Interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and drop this. And I think, yeah, ultimatum's good here. Because we're going to get uh, cards. Let's see, what are we going to end up getting? We're going to end up getting, like, I don't know. Worm, Kogla, Shark. Yeah, if we, get, if we got the worm, it would be sweet. But there, there's no way they're going to give me the worm. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop that on them. And say go and hold up the negate we got them to only scry one and gain one off of that which was great for us it's interesting to see somebody off the off the uh, realm of meta too which is kind of nice to see uh, playing something like this All right, let's go for the worm, obviously. 
and Kogla and Kiora or do we want the Shark Typhoon? Shark Typhoon's probably pretty busted here. Go ahead, do your worst. I have a Kiora in hand too, so we can always play that next turn. If they allow the worm to resolve, I don't I don't see how they can ever do that, but if they do, we're in really good position here. But what's nice is the fact that we're gonna get a Kogla, so we can kill something. The Ephemia is probably the target for that. Yeah, worms back in there. Cast a Shark Typhoon. Then the Kogla. Even though Kogla is a not a, a non-creature spell, so. Oh, it actually does it in reverse too. That's good to know. That's good to know. A lot of cards do that, which is kind of strange. They do it in reverse like that. Whichever one you choose goes on the bottom of the stack. Be careful when doing that. Because had that been a Kiora, we would have wanted the Shark Typhoon to resolve first. I think. And it would have probably gave us another 7-7 seven, seven Shark. Alright, unfortunately we lose Kogla. Shoot. Shoot. Discard a card. Sure, we can discard Negate. Fair enough. Uh, let's go ahead and... Ooh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Hold the negate, maybe? Or... Black and green. And the gate is held open. Perfect. Perfection. They draw a card, eating itself for two. Big Kiora bests the sea gods. Bam! And I think we just took this game over, baby. Oh, and our music ended. What the heck? All right, we'll tap that down. Plus, Koga can just come in and spank it real quick. Yeah, let's go. We got him. Number 1,055. Take him off the list. We beat him. <laughs> GG's. All right, that felt pretty good. We went up against a uh, worthy opponent. They had a mono black style deck, which was kind of cool. Um, I didn't think it'd be that powerful, but it it, uh, it was holding its own pretty well. And uh, a lot of a lot of times I thought maybe they had us, but uh, we were able to pull through, which was nice. Yikes. Okay, opponent goes first, which is a good argument for us to keep this hand because we just need one land in order to mana fix here. <sighs> Shoot. I hope I didn't just destroy myself. One land. Come on. Try him. Oh, you ask, you shall receive, baby. You hear the call, the call out on the triumph? That was nice. That was nice. All right, we'll go double black here on the Cultivate. Got to be really careful about which ones we choose because our ultimatums are very color specific. And we have a lot of devotion to black and green. So blue is kind of the only one where we don't really, uh, we don't really want a whole lot of it. Opponents on Soul Tie as well. Interesting. Let's get the Solemn down. I mean, we could just keep racing for this mana. Uh, we have green in hand. We have blue in hand. So all we need is another green, which the Triumph takes care of. So let's get black, seeing uh, we have Massacre Worm. I guess I shouldn't have got black there. That was a mistake, because now we just set ourselves back one turn on the ultimatum. That kind of stinks. I didn't even think that went through. Yikes. Could have played it right now unfortunate all right well we can play the shark typhoon though that's kind of cool that's kind of cool and uh we could attack but i'm not going to i'd rather keep it back for defense hold up our life total as much as possible you're a best to see guys fair enough all right let's go blue here shadows verdict seems kind of nice but uh i think we go get our own Kiora here. Sh 
Shark Typhoon, and I don't think the worm's relevant. So we want to get another Kogla. This <clears throat> kind of stinks though, because Kogla can't fight the um, Hexproof 8 8. Even if it could, it would die, so that would be kind of silly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like I said, the throat is being wild today. Hopefully they give us our own Kiora though, because uh, we do want to steal back whatever it is they're going to steal. You know what though, I just realized if they give me the Kiora here, they're probably going to steal my Kiora and then steal something else. Ooh, that's not good. <clears throat> that's actually really bad. So remember the stack, let's see if it actually does what I said. So Shark Typhoon first. And then it triggers two six. Oh, let's go. It does. It triggered. Let's go. <clears throat> Taps down all of our stuff. Hit another ultimatum here. This is tough, man. This is tough. We're up against an ultimatum deck too. They're just one turn ahead of us with this Kiora, man. It's... Really not good. It's really not good. Um, how do we handle this, man? If we, we should have put an Ugin in this deck for mirror matchups. Because like I said, here's what's going to end up happening is they're going to actually end up stealing something with the last saga of this. And they're going to steal this, which is then going to be on its third saga the following turn, stealing something else. Okay, you can't have this. Help yourself to whatever else you want there. Our only hope is that our Shark Typhoons are obviously going to get us there with a lot of flyers over the top, which is nice. They didn't play them? Oh my god, they didn't play them? What are they doing? What are they doing? I already got our only two Shark Typhoons, huh? Yeah. So Kiora, Kogla, and Worm. Wow. I can't believe they did that. So the good news is they're tapped down until they're following tap step. Uh, so I can swing freely here, I believe. Uh, you first. I'm sorry, that was the wrong way. Shoot. I forgot, it's reversed. I keep doing that. Uh, no, no one. Don't attack anybody. Let the worm do its thing. That way we get two damage. Alright, they get to gain control of a permanent. Do they see that they can steal my Cura? Please don't steal my Cura. They do. They see it. Alright, they see it. That's unfortunate. So now they're going to be able to steal something else. Gargroth, all right. I can kill Gargroth if I want to play three, four, five odds. Six and six and oh wow, I could go odd here. Oh no, they scooped. They shame scooped after they messed up their ultimatum. I feel so bad for them. I was just about to extinction event though for odd, and that would have been totally fine because everything on my side is even, which is nuts. And then the Gargroth would have been gone. We would have swung through with absolute lethal power. So, GG's to our opponent. That sucks. Screwing up the ultimatum is not fun. Well, I didn't think I'd see another player playing the same deck as me, but uh, happy to know that they were trying to work the kinks out as well because uh, that ultimatum whiff was just too good for us. All right, so we've got Lanawar into Solemn, which is nice. Uh, we might not be able to get an ultimatum off, but we still got a pretty decent hand here. If we can resolve the Shark Typhoon. We're up against the Yorian deck, though, so it could be counter spells. Hopefully not. They get to go first, too, which is never fun. Starting it off with the Triumph always feels so good, man. 
Definitely not going to cycle our Shark Typhoon this game. We're going to be using that to its fullest extent. All right, up against maybe an Azorius control deck. Uh, Lanamar Visionary, I think, first. And then we'll cultivate maybe the following turn, depending on what we draw. All right, Solemn. Definitely want to make sure we're hitting our curve. That's all. I just want to make sure we're hitting our curve. So if we have to cultivate this next turn, so be it. Home into the sea and a glass casket. So this is probably definitely a full control deck. Gotta be careful of these counter spells. Green and black probably. Let's do this. And this. And we need a green and a blue and we can start thinking about ultimatum. Which Solemns can go grab. Uh, Lanawar can become a green itself. Uh, let's go blue first. And hard cast this because we want to be able to compete with all of the Archon Sun Grace shenanigans. And it's going to be rare that we have them tapped out fully, so we want to make sure we're ready for that. And we're good to go. Um, we have answers for the Archon, which is nice. We have the Extinction Events. We have four of those, which can hit all of the Archon and all of its tokens. Um, we also have Shadow's Verdict, which can't hit the Archon, but can sweep all the uh, tokens that they create. I think we're in a really good spot here. Our opponent looks like they might be struggling to get mana. Definitely seems to be the case. Um, cultivate, maybe? Into a Llanowar? That's probably the play. And uh, we want green and green, right? Llanowar Visionary. Beautiful. All right, so now we can start thinking about all of our big plays. Uh, Kogla can come down now and just destroy the Archon, which is great. Um, opponent hasn't played any counter spells yet, but they also haven't had a lot of mana uh, left open to, to actually cast counter spells. So it's not that it's not possible, but... Fate of Feathers, okay, on that. That seems weird. Fate of Feathers on that. Got me confused. All right, uh, I'm gonna be killing this anyway, so let's just keep our 3-3 open. Emergent ultimatum, oh my goodness. Do we just slam a Kogla though right now, killing that, and then worry about this later, or do we go for it now? If we go for this now, they're not gonna allow the Kogla to hit, but we will get a Shark Typhoon and a Worm, which could be okay. Might not, get, We might not get another shot at this. Let's go ahead and throw it down. Uh, worm. Definitely want Kogla, right? We want to fight. Uh, worm. We could just grab an extinction event, huh? But I think what we're going to do is do this. Oh, wait, actually, I want the Shark Typhoon, right? Yeah, Shark Typhoon because it combats with this deck very well. Because they're going to have a lot of flyers. That's the way to go. And then we have a negate held open, which is excellent in case they want to try to sweep the board. All right, so remember, whatever we click on first is actually going second, uh, just for good practice. So Shark Typhoon first, and then Kogla. Kogla fights this. Not too sure why they chose Kogla. I would that would have been the last card I would want to see here because it could obviously smash away your only win con. All right, here we go. Opponent has Yorian in hand now. Yep, there's the Shatter we were kind of expecting. Two more Sharks. And a Scoop. Yeah, I figured that. That usually fall The Negate, usually the, the, the Scoop follows the Negate. <laughs> oh, I feel so bad. <laughs> and that, everybody, is why we have Negate in the deck. For those reasons right there. You set your big stuff up, you get them on the play, and then... Uh, you protect those things with negate. That's the biggest thing is we protect ourselves mostly from things like Ugin, but um, obviously Shadow of the Sky there. That was a perfect example. I go first. No companion. Could be a mono red deck, which would be nice because we have a lot of removal. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this. These three should be in the deck and they should be more setup cards, but we'll keep this nonetheless. Uh, we're probably going to lose because I did keep it, but... You never know. 
You never know. Opponent's on blue. Definitely not mono red. So probably not going to be good for us. Uh, looking at more shenanigans, more counter spells. That is such a cool land, man. Zendikar Rising did a really good job at the uh, full art lands, I can say. They're really sweet. All right, some green mana. I was actually hoping that'd come up. But now we need um, some other plays, you know, some other things to do. Cultivate would be uh, pretty good. Could cycle one shark here, but I don't think that's smart. Let's go here. Now we have the extinction event open for probably nothing. Probably for no reason at all. Uh, Massacre Worm getting closer to be on online. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of options here. About to be a Shark Typhoon in a couple turns. They're taking their time here, but uh, it's helping us definitely get set up. Helping us get set up, which is nice. Uh, we try to slam the Shark Typhoon, or should we just cycle it? I don't know. Put us on mono blue, so you know that there are just a handful of counter spells, right? So maybe we just cycle it. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cycle this. We'll do it next turn, because then we can follow it up with the cure, right? Yeah, let's do that. So hopefully, the the plan here is we're gonna cycle the shark creating a big shark and then hopefully forcing them to use their mana on their turn and then we can slam down a Kiora but we'll have to top deck a land for that to work but um oh it's a mill deck I definitely didn't see that coming this late in the game you're gonna start milling me maybe it might just be to set up other plays like they're into the story or something four I can't even see. <laughs> Is that four? I can't even see. Holy cow, they gotta fix that. That was impossible to see right there. They had the little glare over the four. Alright, so the plan here is for them to deal with this, right? Maybe? Alright. That seemed to resolve pretty easily. They didn't have any sort of answer. We have two of these, so let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Does it resolve? Probably not. Nope. Sure thing. We'll get in there for four, though. Seems pretty good. So we definitely have Counterspell Magic. We knew that was coming. But it is a mill deck, so it's actually probably okay for me to not worry too much about counters. They're probably not crazy into counters. I thought this was like a mono blue control up to an Ugin. So we might be okay to try to slam this again. Uh, let's play this first. Oh, it did resolve. Okay, perfect. Let's go. They had a couple of counters there. They threw away their other counter spell, which I would have probably held on to. Ooh, those are both odd. They shouldn't have done that. And I can play them back to back too, so if they counter the first one, I'll be good. What does that do? Doesn't untap, got it. Uh, we're getting pretty death deadly close to this uh, milling happening though. Yikes. And uh, that's, uh, do we even want to cultivate? Probably not, right? We just don't want, uh, we don't want to cultivate just because it's just less cards in my deck. We want to try to keep our deck as fat as possible because two Teferi's two Deliges is no joke. Even if I hit an ultimatum, like, do we even have anything left in here? We have a Massacre Worm. That's it. And it's probably gone now with this little, uh, Oh, wow, they just scooped it up. They didn't have any other follow-up with the two mana left over. That was actually really close. They just hit me with that into the story, and they were going to mill me for, uh, uh, what was that? Eight. Sixteen? Dang, they would have got me down to two cards, and they didn't have anything else to draw a card with or anything. That seems 
Seems like we got really lucky there. I'll take it. GG. We can probably get in two more games here. I'm really happy though is how, how this is going. Um, the fact that that Naya deck really kind of tanked my record pretty hard. Uh, feels nice to be getting back into the 90s a little bit deeper. Uh, this is not the hand, unfortunately. It's a little better, but not great. Why am I getting all the big plays in my hand, but none of the setup plays? This is at least keepable, I guess. What are we up against though? We don't know, so we don't know which one of these three is gonna be the better card. Probably the one that, I have to commit on one of these two just because they have triple devotion to colors because we're gonna have to go for the other colors here. I'm gonna bank on the Massacre Worm. We haven't seen a whole lot yet. We haven't seen a whole lot of aggro yet, so it could be the time to see some aggro here pretty soon. So we're going to cultivate. All right, we're getting the proper mana, which is nice. Uh, green and blue. Feeling okay about this so far. They haven't played anything, and it's mono black, so it looks like an artifact deck. So we might want to be aware of the fact that uh, Ugin is definitely going to be making a visit, so we're going to need to find that negate. Where's that negate at when you need it, you know? This adds two mana, too, of colorless. So we have to get rid of that off the battlefield. So they got four, five, six mana open already. Looking to kill my visionary. That's fine. Or not. Okay. The Massacre Worm's looking good. Looking very healthy. That's what I needed. Um, yeah, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's get four damage in there. They get to draw a card off of this play, which is kind of eh, but nothing we can do about it. No real way to deal with it properly, I don't think. Bang, bang. Get in there for two. And then if they want to play anything in front of my worm this turn, we can kill it with Kogla. But then we got to start really contemplating, is it worth it playing other cards from there? Because Ugin could blow up our spot pretty bad. We have four, five, six. This will be seven. So we can actually play Cure next turn if that's the better play. We'll see. And if we play Cure, they're going to have the minus seven on the Ugin. Which means Ugin is essentially gone. So that could be a play. These sleeves are wild. I don't know if any of you guys played the Historic event. It's funny, I've never even played Historic yet. Not one time. And I saw this Historic event and I saw the, the amount of prizes you can get from it. And so uh, I just went to uh, net deck. I net decked a quick little top tier... Um, what color was it? Banth, I think? It was Banth colors? And uh, net decked it real quick, created the deck, and I, I went to the historic event. <laughs> I won two matches, but uh, yeah, just best of three in historic, uh, both not my forte. All right, so if this was kicked, it gets 1-1 counters. Whenever it becomes a target of a spell, sacrifice it, create a number of 1-1 colorless artifact token. Power, okay. Okay. That's fine. Do we kill it? Do we kill it? Nah. Nah, you can live to fight another day, little little guy. Not trying to target you, because you get number of 1-1 one, one tokens equal to its power. So you'd get a, uh, four 1-1s. One, one. So instead, we're going to tap you down and then come through with our big stuff. Yep, that's hexproof, all right. That's hexproof. And what's nice too is we tap down the Maze Mind Tome. What is it that I want to steal though? Do I want to steal the Construct or the Maze Mind Tome? Maze Mind Tome is probably going to kick one more time before... What is it doing? What are they doing? They're highlighting me a lot. They're highlighting my cards a lot and I don't like that. Oh, you got to be kidding me. They're going even here. All right, I mean, it gets rid of that. That's kind of okay. 
That's kind of all right. I'm definitely not slamming Kogla here because if they do play Ugin, it you know, I definitely don't want everything to get wiped. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna attack with the two two here. Hope I draw into a negate. Nope. No negate for me. Yep, they're gonna get one more tick out of the maze mind tome. Unfortunate for us. We were gonna steal that if they would have left it at the two, but just for one, I definitely don't want to uh steal that. So we'll probably steal their land. Set them back a turn. Or if they want to play something here, that's cool too. We'll be taking that. Would really like it though if we'd stop drawing lands now. That'd be great. That would be fantastic. Green. And swing on in. So hopefully thinning the deck out there helped a little bit. Help us find uh, something useful, like an ultimatum. We still have four, right? We didn't even use any yet, right? Yes, yeah, so we still have four. So we have a 9% chance of drawing it. Um, Shark Typhoon would be nice too. We could start building up some, some army of sharks to try to win this game. That'd be kind of cool. All right, they're going to draw a card here. Yep, for sure. All right, there it is. Let's go. Let's go ahead and thin the deck out a little bit more to you. Blue. Eerie Ultimatum. Shark Typhoon. Massacre Worm. Kiora. That seems like a good that seems like a good set of cards right there. Which one don't you want to see hit the battlefield? Unfortunately, one of them is going to. Two of them are actually. Nothing you can do about it. They got six mana plus the two here too. Okay, they're gonna let the shark typhoon go, huh? Okay. Interesting. It's funny because I really wanted the shark typhoon to resolve more than anything, and uh they chose for it not to, which is smart. I just didn't think that they would uh, go for that play. So now they're down to six mana again. No Ugin this turn. And we tap down anything they play this turn. I had a feeling that might have been the play. Those extinction events are really killing us, man. We, uh, we can steal their land again, but <clears throat> doesn't seem like a great play. I might just play a Kogla here, because <clears throat> why not? I don't know why I did that. Now I'm going to have to pick that up. All right, we, used, uh, we had him use up another extinction event there. That's actually kind of nice. I don't mind that. A one for one? I'll take that all day. We'll be taking your untapped land, please. Man, we are just ramping up today, aren't we? Give me a card, any card. Not that card, any other card. Kogla down, no one to fight. Because they're scared. They're scared of us. Just gotta avoid one more extinction event. I'm sure they have spot removal though. Yeah, Heartless Axe and Blood Chief's Thirst, great. I mean, what do I do? What do I do here at this point, you know what I'm saying? What can a guy do at this point? Just getting absolutely destroyed by removal, man. How many actual relevant cards can we end the game with at this point? Just one, or two Shark Typhoons, got it, okay. Which are really good actually, but. Yeah, I'm gonna have to play that. I'm gonna go ahead and have to play that. If that gets too big or gets wild, I can't really deal with it too well. Let's thin the deck out some more. Yes. Thin it out a little bit more. 
What a long, drawn out, grindy game, huh? Ooh, that's not good. That ain't good. Okay, Ugin can't minus on me, so that's good. But it can just plus and get rid of my Solemn. Pretty sure Ugin wins the game for them, if I'm being completely honest. Couple extinction events that I don't need, nice. Very nice. We knew Ugin was coming. There wasn't much we could do in this matchup. It was kind of a really bad matchup. Taylor made for us to lose here uh, with all of these removal spells. Did a really good job in keeping me from not resolve. I mean, I resolved what two ultimatums here and like or two Kioras. Sheesh. Well played, I guess. They get to ultimate to Ugin next turn unless I find something. But I mean. Again, I don't have anything relevant to even find. Go for an even here. And then we'll just uh, drop a land because we, you know, that's what we needed right there was that, that key land. We needed to draw that. Minus 10, of course. No, they didn't ultimate. Wow. Okay. Giving me a chance, you're saying. Maybe I can just make a huge shark and bait them into like, um, I mean, they're gonna plus again. I don't think they want a minus, which is weird. A lot of people do that, but it doesn't matter. We didn't draw the shark anyways. The shark typhoon, that's what we needed. Oh my gosh. They have the freaking maze mind tome, which is gonna get them all kinds of value. Oh, this feels so bad, man. I mean, there's not even that many lands left in the deck. Can we stop drawing them? A uh, negate would have been really nice to have in the hand before that Ugin hit, you know? Yikes. Big yikes. Well, there it is. The minus 10 and that for us, everybody, is the game. I'm going to go ahead and just draw one more card, see what happens, but that's probably the game. Good old Dugan, man. They got us. They got us. Fair enough. But this one has uh, been 12 minutes. I think that's going to wrap up the video. I hate to end it on a loss like that, but it happens. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, we're going to go ahead and get into the breakdown, though, and talk about the deck a little bit. That makes things a little interesting. Hold on. Hold the phone. Hold the phone here. One of those. One of those. One of those. Four and ones. So. I guess if we got the extinction event, we'd go even just to get rid of that because it can create a bunch of one ones. Uh, that first and then we'll extinction event first. For even. And then we'll draw a card, hopefully hitting a shark typhoon. Even. What if we win this game? That would be so madness. <laughs> okay, we can cycle that. Okay. Screw it. I'm going odd. I don't even care. Just trying to stay alive here. Just trying to stay alive here. And uh, still hoping and wishing on that, that Shark Typhoon top deck. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. We shall see. Crawling Barons is about to just destroy my face. We're still on my turn too, right? So they can deal three damage plus the four is a seven. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, they, they, I'm pretty sure they have lethal here. So we're going to go ahead and concede now. That's a wrap. That's a GG. So let's go ahead and break it down, guys. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I appreciate it. I know that last one kind of sucks, but uh, let's just get right into it. Did I accidentally switch the video? My bad. GG. 
And those are the games, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video from the beginning to the end. I do really appreciate it if you made it this far into the video. Special thank you to you. I really can't thank you enough for all the help you give the channel and the support you give the channel by watching all the way through you're helping the algorithm a lot in getting our videos pushed out to other people and more eyes on the content so thank you so much for that uh, we're here with the post game wrap up though let's talk about the deck a little bit and how it played and um, maybe some things we would change to the deck so for starters I think Solemn's a little bit overkill. I don't think Solemn has a place in this deck. Um, Solemn does get us a little bit more ramp and more um, land advantage of getting into our ultimatum, which is very nice. But with Cultivate and Land of War Visionary, I feel like kind of already gets the job done enough. Um, so I feel like this spot <clears throat> could be switched out and replaced for something else. I also think that uh, two Shark Typhoons is not enough. I feel like Shark Typhoon really kind of shined here um, in a lot of aspects. Maybe not like outright just you know it wasn't something that was super apparent but it, you could feel it when you're playing the game that you really want to have those shark typhoons revolved on the uh, resolved on the battlefield because they're what they're some of the hardest stuff to deal with um i mean obviously ugin hits it and stuff but you noticed in the last game we had our board kept just getting wiped of creatures over and over again and they weren't letting us resolve any shark typhoons in that situation shark typhoon would have been a perfect answer and being able to find more of those would have been great so only having two here is a little rough i would definitely maybe up that to four cutting these out and then maybe dropping in two more cards um maybe drop one negate and add like two or three blood chiefsters um i feel like that would be pretty good just for those spot removals and uh being able to deal with those ugins when they do hit the battlefield and resolve uh but overall i think the deck worked really well uh we obviously won a lot more than we lost and uh the uh, the ultimatum here it's just such a fantastic card. Um, big fan of this card. I think it's amazing. Never really got a chance to try it. And so I'm glad at the end of this, uh, you know, set um, and going into the new set with, um, you know, Kaldheim. I'm happy that we were able to play this card finally and get a deck out there for you. Uh, there's a, a lot of ideas I have on my mind right now. And uh, I can't wait to get into them for Kaldheim and start pumping out new decks for you guys. But starting next or this Friday, this video is coming out on Monday. So this Friday will be our first video, I think, um, on Cal time. So be on the lookout for that. If you're not already subscribed and hitting that bell, please do, because you will be notified when that video goes live. And uh, I think that's going to be it for this deck breakdown, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you guys all have a fantastic rest of your day, and we'll see you on Friday. Peace.